Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'll be talking about an underrated gem from one of my favorite action heroes growing up, uh, the one and only Sylvester Stallone. He's known for Rocky, Rambo, uh, Cliffhanger, Demolition Man, Cobra, The Expendables, Tango and Cash, and a slew of other films that uh, made him a superstar. Always been a fan of him. He's one of the few action heroes was between him and Arnold Schwarzenegger that I gravitated to growing up. But there was a time um, where he kind of lost footing in the marketplace. So he had films like Judge Dredd, Assassins, and Daylight that failed at the box office and his career was in jeopardy. And at that time, uh, there was a company, I believe, called Miramax Films that created all these indie films and they resurrected one of his protégés, John Travolta, in Pulp Fiction. So Sylvester Stallone decided to go the indie route and join up with this little unknown uh, director at the time, director-writer, who would go on to do great things. This guy's name is James, James Mangold, who would go on to do Logan, Walk the Line, Ford vs. Ferrari, Indiana Jones and the Dial Destiny, and a great uh, 310 to Yuma. So Sylvester Stallone packed on about 40 pounds. He used to have a super jacked up physique. He gained 40 pounds, joins the stellar cast. It, this is an indie film, but the cast is a who's who of anybody at that time. So you had Sylvester Stallone, Harvey Cartel as Ray, Ray Liotta as Gary, Robert De Niro as Mr. Tilden, Peter Borg, Janine Delafio. Michael Rappaport, Robert Patrick, who was part of Terminator 2. Then there's Annabella Skirora. There's Nora Emmerich, Kathy Marotti, and John Spencer, and a slew of others. It was a who's who. Frank Vincent, Edie Falco from The Sopranos. It's like I said, it's a who's who. It starts off as an indie film. You have this great stellar cast. So basically it takes place in the fictional town of Garrison, New Jersey, where all the cops live. It's a cheaper housing, not cheaper housing, but you know, their mortgages are cheaper, they're untouchable, no one can go there, they're out of everybody's jurisdiction. It's run by Sylvester Stallone's character, who's basically a quiet uh, sheriff with a hearing disability, and his two deputies who kind of run, there's not really anything to run, it's, it's a town run by cops, you know, it's the safest place to be, in a sense until you start digging deeper and you see they're all doing, they're all kind of dirty cops. So at one point in the film, one of the cops has uh, created a crime and they have to hide him out. And Sylvester Stone starts to investigate this thing and opens up a big can of worms. I really enjoyed this film. Uh, it's one of us, it's a slow burn film. It's nothing like Stallone did in the past where there's, you know, 150 gunfights. There's one at the very end of the film, but it builds slowly the tension is is incredible uh stallone his character is you know a damaged broken man who didn't become a cop like the rest of them. all these guys he they grew up with they all grew up together in this movie you can see it. there's a history among them uh because of his hearing problem when he went to go save uh the character liz played by annabella scora who he was in love with and she goes on to marry someone else and he's broken hearted after all these years. He still, you know, yearns for her and, and it would do anything to be with her. He's a very, you know, um, character who's just given up on everything until this case comes along. And Robert De Niro, who's, uh, you know, an internal investigator, kind of ignites this fire in him, albeit very at the last minute. Even De Niro at one point says, it's too late. I asked you two weeks ago to do this. You know, you've had your chance to do something. But he still gets up and does it. Um, the great thing is Sylvester Stallone was pegged as a, you know, a muscle-bound action hero. But if you watch Rocky, there there is that underdog uh, persona that Stallone um, captures beautifully. And he does it in this one. He's another underdog. And I love this. And the thing is, it just shows his acting ability. And he holds his own against Cartel, Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro. You know? And he holds his own. And he, if not, he even does better than these guys. 
I think the the problem this film didn't do well. It did well. It forty four million on a fifteen million dollar budget, but it was considered a a disappointment considering the stellar cast in this movie. But I think that's the thing that hurt this movie as well. Um, it's a very simple story about dirty cops and tr and someone trying to do the right thing, you know, and redeem himself and and in turn, you know, fix himself by stopping the bad guys. Because, you know, once you kind of shut off your 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 search for justice, you're kind of a bad guy too, right? So he's kind of turning himself around and cleaning up the town. And that slow build is really interesting. It's really well done. Uh, Mangold does a fantastic job in that. I thought the relationship between Annabella Sciorra and Sylvester Stallone as these couples that should have been, could have been, there's a nice scene where he's playing uh, uh, Darkness at the Edge of Town by Bruce Springsteen. And she's like, you know, why did you find the right girl? And he goes, you know, all the great ones were taken. And, you know, she holds his face and you can see him. He's like putting his hand like he wants to tell her that you're still the one. You're still the one. You're the one for me. Uh, very, very great dynamic between these two. Everybody's playing off each other well. But I think what really hurt this film is just too many stars and it's a simple story of good versus evil and redemption, right? I think people were expecting something like Pulp Fiction. Like I said, Travolta at that time kind of uh, saved himself by doing an indie film with uh, Quentin Tarantino called Pulp Fiction. So people thought that this is going to be the same thing. It's going to be a lot of blood too, a lot, of, and there isn't. It's just at the end, there's a, there's a shootout. But all the way there, that like I said, the tension builds as, as Stallone's character really sees that the town is corrupt. And that he's been turning this blind eye. And now it's time for him to do something about it. Uh, another great character in here is Gary Figgis, played by Ray Liotta, the late great Ray Liotta, um, who plays a burnt out cop. You know, he's really good. And he kind of plays the conscience of not only Stallone, but I think the audience. You know, he, he tells them there's something wrong with this town, that, you know, he got passed up to being a cop because of his injury. The girl, Anna, uh, Liz, went on with someone else because he didn't become a cop. He got shortchanged. And, you know, why should he do anything for anybody else, you know, but himself, you know? But he's, you know, at one point he says something, you got to do the right thing. So Ray Liotta plays kind of like the conscience for the, for the moviegoer and Stallone. And I thought it was a really good dynamic between them as well. De Niro, who's not there a lot, really makes an impact as the internal investigator. I, I really liked him as well. Really, uh, Harvey Cartel is great too as the ringleader of the Dirty Cops. He looks like a stand-up guy. He's like a you know the the model cop on the outside, but you know certain scenes when he looks at you and the way he talks to you, he's not he's not a nice guy, and he would you know he would end you without hesitation. Um, and everybody else is good in there too. Pa you know Robert Patrick, Peter Borg, um, you know. Uh, Michael Rappaport, they're all great in this movie. Everybody holds their own and does an outstanding job. Like I said, this is an, an indie film with a superstar cast. So like I said, I think it, it underperformed because people were expecting something else other than this. In a way, it's a simplistic story of good versus evil. But the performances are amazing. Stallone says this movie hurt his career um, and it took him a long time to recover. Maybe so, because people didn't see him as, as a dramatic actor at that time. Maybe still to this day, they don't. But this is the film, I think now it's garnered a cult following, and people really have learned to appreciate this film. And the more you watch it, the more you get to enjoy it. There's so many layers to this film, and it's an underrated gem in the Stallone uh, catalog, and I think it's worth revisiting. If you, if you like dramas, if you like, um, you know thrillers if you like slow burns like i said this is it builds very slowly and comes to a crescendo at the very end of the film if you like those slow burns this is the one for you if you ever doubted stallone's ability to act this movie will put that to rest he can hold his own if he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with robert de niro and ray Liotta and harvey cartel and make them look like they gotta catch up to him he's got something I don't think he's been given his just due in, in dramas, and hopefully that'll change soon. 
Uh, but this, I think, was the turning point for me where I kind of realized there's a lot more to it. You know what? I got to do what I got to do, you know? There's a lot more to him to that. And this is a, an underrated film, in my opinion. Deserves a second chance. Definitely deserves um, a reevaluation. If you love Stallone, if you, if you love Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro, Harvey Cartel, then this is the film you should check out. It's an underrated gem in the Stallone catalog. And even Man's Gold, I think, um, you know, this is one of the things that people don't mention this film too much. They, they always mention Walk the Line, Ford versus Ferrari, 310 to Yuma, and, you know, Hate It or Leave It, the last Indiana Jones film, you know, but nobody really mentions this anymore, and it's unfortunate. The only thing um, I'm going to say that Man's Gold kind of, I don't think he fully believed in Stallone's ability there. There's tinges of this greatness that's going to come out in some of the scenes. And it's just toned back a little bit. And I think Stallone, I think Mansgold had a little bit of doubt in Stallone's performance, maybe. But if you look at it, he's phenomenal in here. And I think Mansgold should have let him run with this character a lot more than he did. I think it's a little subdued, but it's still a wonderful, wonderful character that he played. And I think if he would have been given the free reign... I think we would have been blown away. Maybe that would have changed the course of this film as well. But that's my take. You let me know. Have you seen this film? What do you think of this film? We'd love to hear from you. This is Steven with my uh, thoughts on the underrated gem in the Stallone catalog, 1997's Copland. <laughs>